Well, we're very confident that this is the specification that will work for Gibraltar. We've spent uh, 16 months in government reviewing what power station should Gibraltar should have. As you know, we've brought in some temporary measures that are providing all the generating capacity that Gibraltar needs to date. But we've got problems resulting in power cuts even now because of the state of the grid. The work on the, on the grid is ongoing, and now we're ready to procure the new power station for Gibraltar. So those problems are going to continue in the meanwhile? Well, those problems are going to continue whilst the grid is not dealt with and the work on the grid is ongoing. We started that work as soon as we were advised that this work was required. But it's no longer that there isn't the generating capacity. That was one of the problems that the previous administration was experiencing. You knew that they bought some uh, skid generators, one megawatt skid generators, and rented some others. Those have now not uh, been relied on by, for some time by the uh, Gibraltar Electricity Authority because we've got the turbines at North Mole presently running on diesel, but hopefully soon perhaps running on gas. Do you feel this is the most environmental option? It is the most environmentally friendly option of the options that involve burning uh, fossil fuels, burning hydrocarbons. And unfortunately, um, Gibraltar has to operate as an electricity island. We can't rely on the Spanish grid. We wouldn't want to because of the obvious political implications that might have. And we have to have what is presently the most reliable source of electricity, and that involves burning hydrocarbons. In the context of where we're going with renewable energy, I think you'll also see that we're going to introduce a lot of renewable renewable energy options into our grid, but I don't think we'll be able to have 100% of our energy reliably produced from renewable energy, not for now at least. So in that context, we have to have a reliable source of electricity, and the most environmentally friendly way of doing that, we believe, is with gas. 80 megawatts, how far into the future have you planned and what sort of growth has your government predicted? We're looking really at the next uh, 30 years and being able to have generating capacity not just for now but for the next 30 years for the growth that we expect we'll see in Gibraltar and for the type of electrical demand that we may see. Look, it, it is also possible that as technology advances, one of the things that the technology will do is to affect the demand side. So you've seen how light bulbs are changing now. The bulbs we use today uh, drag less on the uh, demand on the grid. That may have an effect in what capacity we need in the future. But at the same time, as the world goes um, online onto the cloud, data centers become very important and data centers are very electricity hungry. So we've got to make sure that we have the capacity, not just that we might need this year and next year, but the capacity we're going to need for the next 30 years. Some would argue that a reliance on fossil fuels isn't in keeping with your government's stated environmental goals. Uh, burning gas in the way that we expect to be able to burn it may be a very environmentally friendly option. It may be economically much cheaper than burning diesel, looking at the way that uh, prices have behaved until now. And the emissions from a gas fueled power station can be almost zero with the type of technology that we're looking at applying. We wouldn't be looking to introduce a, a power station that burnt a fuel that could create a noxious emission and I think that we can deal with all of those issues very effectively by the methods that we're looking to introduce. In the past 12 months we've seen some issues with uh, supply to the UK. Do you share those concerns? We don't currently rely on gas supplies. We don't currently rely on gas supplies. We rely on, on oil supplies, on, on diesel supplies, and we have some concerns about the capability to have diesel reliably provided in Gibraltar. You saw during a recent strike in Spain, I think uh, three or four years ago, that we had a problem with diesel being delivered to Gibraltar. We had to go onto almost strategic reserve where we were supplying only the power station, taxis and essential vehicles. Those issues could happen with any fuel. The idea is to have sufficient gas so that we would be able to get over any such hurdles if they were to come in the future. But we are very confident that we'll be able to source sufficient gas from Gibraltar, even without um, having it piped in from Spain, which is not presently a possibility. But I, I think even uh, more than that, the important thing about what we're going to procure in terms of generating capacity is the uh, aspect of a dual fired engines. There'll be some engines that might also be fired on diesel if necessary, if we didn't have sufficient or gas or any gas at all. That's an important element of what we are proposing to do so that we are doing a belt and braces job on this issue. You talk of very low emissions, but is this a better site than Windmill Hill? It's much closer to residential areas. 
Well, it's a better site because of the type of generating capacity that we're looking at installing. Now, we don't um, expect to have to rely on diesel very much or at all from this power station. And if we burn gas there, then the types of emissions that there will be will not be noxious in any way. There'll be almost zero emissions. We'll be using scrubbers in the technology as well. So, look, no politician should even consider going down the road of uh, these days bringing any technology which is not the best available technology which is going to reduce emissions to as close to zero as possible and that's almost zero these days and the noise when you burn uh, gas will be much lower than it is uh, with diesel because there isn't what is known as the diesel knock a lot of the noise in diesel um, engines is the knock the other issue of course is the issues that the the equipment that you put around the power station actually to to cool the power station because this power station is going to be next to the sea there could be other solutions found there I believe that people who live in the area will find that a modern power station of the sort that we're looking at can be guaranteed to create absolutely no dangerous emissions whatsoever and have no, no, no noise polluting effects whatsoever. And that is what we're looking for in this tender. And if it were not possible because we don't get the responses that we expect under the tender, then it wouldn't happen in that context. But we're very confident, having done the research that we have, that this will be imminently possible. Do you foresee any problems with Spain in respect of the reclamation? I don't foresee any problems whatsoever with Spain uh, in respect of the reclamation other than the usual ones. I assume that there will be the usual cursory complaint. But as you've seen in respect of the east side reclamation, the European Parliament has considered that Gibraltar has acted properly in the way that we've handled that reclamation in our waters and that the cross-boundary effects of those uh, uh, projects is taken into consideration in the appropriate way. It's not a large reclamation. It's really just ending the kink at the corner of the North Mole reclamation. On a separate subject, in London today, some very reassuring words from the Queen. Yes, indeed, and, and the words which Her Majesty utters in the Queen's speech, um, as constitutionalists will know, are words which represent the policy of Her Majesty's government in the United Kingdom. What she said is what has been said by the coalition in its midterm review, um, involving uh, all matters the coalition agreement dealt with, and the overseas territories was one of them. So this continues the very positive and stalwart defence of Gibraltar's right to self-determination that we've seen from David Cameron, from David Liddington, and of course, from William Hague. In Madrid yesterday you met with Spanish journalists. Your government of course has a contract with a public relations company in Madrid, yet we still hear Spanish government officials referring to the rock as a tax haven. How difficult is this fight? Well, it's not difficult. You just have to be on the front foot. You have to constantly be there to counter what it is that they are saying, which is wrong. And you have to go not just armed with arguments, you have to go armed with facts. And this is what we've done in Madrid. And I think we've, we've done a good job of getting the argument across for Gibraltar. We've had coverage for what the Gibraltar government's position is and for the facts behind that position in some of the right-wing press as well as in some of the more neutral press. I think Gibraltar has an obligation uh, to continue to put those arguments so that our reputation is not traduced by people who are not relying on facts to do so. And finally, what of the leader of the opposition's criticism that you seem to be briefing everybody except him? You did change a motion in Parliament based on the premise that you are going to brief him on vital issues such as the UK's proposed in-out EU referendum. I change a motion in Parliament to brief him on that issue, not on any other, and I will be doing so. Um, as you have seen, I've been quite busy, and unfortunately we've had a, a difficult period in the last month involving a minister. Um, and I'm very surprised that Daniel Featham, if he felt that I hadn't yet got in touch with him for that, uh, for that briefing in respect of EU matters, and he so desired it, didn't try to reach me directly through my office um, in order to ask that we set a date. Uh, it is peculiar, and when, when people issue public statements about private meetings, one uh, seems to, uh, one might be forgiven for thinking that they're more interested in the publicity than they are in the briefing. Despite that, you know, I forgive him uh, entirely for having made that a uh, rookie mistake and I'm quite happy to be in touch with him shortly as soon as I have uh, the relevant officials who will be involved in assisting me in briefing him um, in Gibraltar to um, ensure that we can go ahead and have uh, such a briefing. But, but let me be clear, there's something else I've said, which is that I want to create a privy council style um, approach to information so that people across the political divide can have relevant information on issues which are important nationally. I've said I'm going to create that status 
I am going to do so, and it's going to go well beyond this European Union issue. Uh, Daniel Feetham has not commented on that other than to say in an interview with another uh, television channel and uh, with The Chronicle now, uh, in a press release I understand, that I haven't yet gone in contact with him to do so. Well, look, it's my initiative. Um, I'm very keen to deploy it. It's not something that we've seen in Gibraltar before. It's not something that he as Minister for Justice or the government of which he was a member before even might have considered. Mr. Kafana was actually, and the GSD were actually quite different in their approach in government. They would never want the opposition and briefed even by third parties or private entities who were dealing with the government about any particular project. So I'm delighted that my government is going to be innovative and it's going to be thinking about Gibraltar first in taking this approach. This is my approach to how Gibraltar should be governed and I'll soon be in touch with him. He need not fret.